How did you scar someone for life? My sister used to sleep with this giant stuffed dog that was probably four feet long. She'd put it on the right side of the bed and cover the dog with a blanket so it looked like a body pillow. Anyways, in fifth grade, I thought it would be funny to play a prank on my little sister. I took out the dog and I climbed into her bed and covered myself with the blanket where the stuffed dog usually was while she went to talk to my mum. My sister comes back and climbs into bed to sleep while I'm laying in the bed with her without her knowing. It's dark in the room. I lay there in silence for maybe about three minutes when I finally go, Hey. She literally screamed at the top of her lungs and ran out of her room so fast that she knocked over everything along the way to my mum's room. It was probably one of the funniest moments of my life. However, I did scar my sister so badly that to this day, and she's 20 now, before she climbs into bed, she always removes the blanket to check if anything is underneath. Needless to say, she almost had a panic attack watching The Grudge. You guys know the scene I'm talking about. So, what have the rest of you done that scarred someone for life? I just learned this month that one of my three sisters is afraid of vampires. I had accidentally tripped the breakers in the house one night while my parents were out and I was watching them. I was 12 and my sisters all gathered in the back room, the only one that still had power. I saw this as an opportunity and targeted the youngest who was 6. I told her that I'd cut off the power intentionally and that I was a vampire. I told her that I intended to eat her and as I did this, I suddenly leaned in close and bared my teeth. All three of my sisters screamed and the elder two fled the room, each out of opposite doors. The youngest, abandoned, instantly burst into tears and grabbed the nearest weapon, a serious pair of scissors off a side table. As she lunged, screaming at my chest, I saw the fear and determination in her face and I ran. I passed up my other two sisters on the way out and locked myself in one of the bathrooms. I screamed my confession of the joke immediately and begged my other sisters to calm her down. I learned that apparently the single light in the room had managed to shine red across my eyes at just the right moment and throw terrifying shadows across my face. Oddly enough, it was actually the second youngest that was scarred by this, refusing to watch a vampire movie to this day. I never threatened the youngest again. I went over to my friend's house. Right when I walked in, I could hear him doing the dishes. I walked by the kitchen and his back was to me. So I walked into the kitchen and just stood behind him. Like a foot behind him. I honestly have no idea how he couldn't have at least sensed me there. Then I just stood there smiling, waiting for him to turn around. After about a minute, he finally turned around and did one of those no sound screams where he just inhaled loudly for about five seconds. He was also thankfully just washing his last spoon and not his last knife because he spun the spoon around in his hand to stabbing position. It was honestly close to the hardest I've ever laughed. What got me was the silent scream and the look of absolute horror on his face. He says he still gets a little edgy when he's alone in the house washing dishes, or when he thinks he's alone. Well, I feel like this is as far as you should take this one, because your friend is now going to absolutely shank you if you are ever found to be standing behind him again. I've also done this to the same person a few too many times in a row and now move deliberately, loudly around the house in the fear that the next time I surprise him may be my last. Best of luck to you. Ah, this one happened to me. My older cousin once told me that when you flush the toilet, a monster will come out, and the only way to be safe is to enter another room before the flushing noise stops, because the doorway is a barrier. Even long after I stopped believing it, I kept doing this out of habit. Flushing the toilet still gives me a sense of impending danger and a desire to leave the room really quickly. When I was six, my parents took me to the Natural History Museum that featured a dinosaur exhibit with a T-Rex that would move its head and roar. In my mind, the sound of the toilet flushing was very similar to that of a T-Rex roaring. So clearly flushing the toilet would alert a T-Rex in the area, and it would come running over to eat me. From then on, I would make sure I was all done, pants buttoned up, door open, hands washed before flushing the toilet, and then I'd run the frick out and slam the door behind me. It only applied to our second floor bathroom though, because the window in that room was the perfect height for a T-Rex's head to take a peek inside. Any other toilet was fine to flush, so I only got the urge at my parents' house to look out the window to check for random dinosaurs gallivanting around. I threw the frisbee for my dog and she kicked up a stick that stabbed her belly while running for it. She's deathly afraid of frisbees now. 
One day, when I was about five, my dad brought home a pack of gummy bears that he got at work. He shared them with me, of course, but I kept playing with them. The way they reformed themselves after being crushed was oddly amusing until he told me that when you eat them, they'll reform in your stomach and climb out of your throat. Then he leaned in and whispered, and they're gonna remember who did that to them. I still can't eat those darn things. My brother and I shared a room growing up. I'm a side sleeper, so I'd always be facing his bed as I drifted off to sweet slumber. Somehow, as my eyes slowly opened and closed, he could time it perfectly that I would close my eyes, open them, and behold, there he was at the foot of my bed. I still have trouble falling asleep, and we don't even share a room anymore. So I used to share a room with my sister when we were about seven. So one day before bedtime, I decided to draw a dog on the ceiling. Yeah, I was a little brat, and I justified it to my sister with, it'd be the first thing I'd see when I wake up, and then my day would be great. The cartoon dog turned out so great that my sister begged me to draw her one. I agreed and started drawing, but it wasn't a dog. It was a scary mother frickin' onion man. It looked like a melting onion face. I don't know why I drew it. It really messed her up. She had nightmares about him, and my parents moved her out to a different room. In short, I drew a scary onion man above my sister's bed. She refuses to buy me Christmas presents to this very day. I should clarify that it was about 14 years ago, and it's long since been painted over. As I remember, it looked exactly like a grumpy, rotting onion face. Just imagine an onion face, then imagine it decomposed. And grumpy. My brother still flinches every time a butterfly flies by because I told him they were poisonous. He's almost 18 now. I waited for my dog to come through the dog door, and when I saw him on his merry way, I stuck my head out of it and screamed, Boo! He's never used that dog door again. Damn me, now I have to let him out all the time. My brother came into the bathroom when I was having a bath at about four years of age. He asked if I'd like to hear a story, and then proceeded to tell me a horrifying story about monsters. As he neared the end of the story, he turned off the light switch and said, If you put one foot out of the bath, the monsters will get you. He shut the door, leaving me alone in the pitch black bathroom. The water got colder and colder, but I didn't move a muscle. Mum found me there about three hours later, scared stiff and crying. Screw everything about baths. I had an awesome Labrador growing up. The nicest, friendliest, happiest dog I've ever known. We were at my aunt's house when he was about two, and he saw a horse for the first time. He went to investigate and was carefully smelling the horse through the fence, bringing his nose up to meet the horses. When his metal choke collar touched the electric fence, he yelped and ran and turned into a trembling, slobbering mess any time he saw a horse for the rest of his life. I did not expect this many stories about people traumatizing their poor doggos when I began writing this script for the video. They're delicate animals and apparently very prone to learning way too much from their mistakes. Poor poochies, I hope your gentle souls were soothed by the eating of many treats. When I was in sixth grade, we were studying surface tension. I thought it was really fascinating and started asking my teacher all kinds of questions. I guess my eagerness was annoying because when I asked Mrs. Vance why soap would break the surface tension of water and how it worked, she rolled her eyes at me. You know, Susan, if you'd start washing your hands after you go to the bathroom, you wouldn't have to worry about things like that. The class laughed at me and teased me for weeks. That one moment completely changed the way that I did school. Instead of asking questions in class, I remained pretty silent unless forced to talk, and I started memorizing textbooks to avoid feeling that way in class ever again. I recently did this to my significant other. I waited until he was going into his room, the light was off, and I hid next to the light switch and cupped my hand over it. He went to turn on the light, felt my hand, and freaked the F out. He's a big man with a deep voice, sounds like Peter Steele. He went up about eight octaves and squealed like a little girl. Fricking hilarious. He now sticks his head into the room before turning on the light. Next time he does this, I'm going to put my hand over his face. <laughs> my older brother loves to stay up late and play video games in our basement. One night we had a scary movie marathon with the lights off. When we were done, I pretended to go upstairs and hid behind our sofa. After about ten minutes of playing games, I whisper, do you want to play a game? I have never seen him move that fast in his life. He still refuses to play video games late at night six years later. 
I remember thinking when I was younger about how spontaneous death is after the death of my grandfather. Now, whenever I leave somebody's room or house or whatever, I say something incredibly kind to them. That way, if they do die, the last thing I've said will have been awesome. From the time when I was about three, my big brother told me all sorts of bugs and earwigs would get inside my ears while I slept and they'd eat my brain. He went into horrible details of how they'd reach my eyes and slowly eat them and it would be the most painful experience of my life. I sleep with a blanket over my head at all times and wake up in the morning to check my ears the very first thing. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. One day when I was about seven, my little brother being about five, my mum took me, my brother, and my friend to a carpet and fabric store for some improvement project she was doing. Us kids wandered off and started exploring this maze of carpet walls, and in the middle of our exploring, my friend and I shot each other a look that it was time to mess with the young one. Immediately we both scream, oh my god, it's here, and take off running. My brother has no idea what's going on, but instantly starts panicking. He's running, trying to catch up with us, and is freaking out, saying, what? What is it? My friend and I stop to catch our breath, and we look up at the top of the maze as if we were making sure that we were safe from some danger. We then tell him that we saw the African killer moth, a rare species of moth that grows from eggs planted in exotic fabrics, and that one bite from the moth can be deadly. My brother goes pale, and just as he's about to ask us something, I look up and yell, Oh my god, it's back! As my friend and I take off running, and ditch my now crying and fearing for his life brother. This goes on about another ten minutes until my mum finds us and yells at us all for being stupid. All fine and dandy, or is it? Cut to a couple of years back when I'm a senior in high school and my brother's a sophomore and the whole family's hanging out in the living room. Me, him, mum, and dad. We're all talking and suddenly a huge mother of a moth flies in and starts running into the ceiling lights. My brother turns white. My dad and I are laughing at how big the thing is and how we're going to need a bowl just to catch it. Meanwhile, my brother is just on the brink of losing it. My mum and dad are brainstorming how to get out when I just say, it's easy, we just turn off all the lights except one and it'll head towards that one. My brother flips, just loses it. No! He breaks down and starts crying as he runs into his room and slams the door, screaming the whole time. Yeah, I traumatized my little brother. Not quite scarred, but my sister hates every time we retell the story. I think I was about 12 and my brother was 10. My mum and three-year-old sister went out to run errands while my brother and I stayed behind. While they were gone, we took my sister's favorite toy, a stuffed lamb named Lammy, and put the shredded up top of a white tube sock around its neck like Lammy was wearing a collar made of shredded up sock. We stuck Lammy's body in between the couch cushions, but left its head exposed with the shredded sock collar visible. We scattered some of my mum's cotton balls around and voila, it looks like Lammy's severed head was waiting to greet them on the couch. When my sister came home, she let out a quiet, who did this? and immediately burst into tears. We were grounded, she was fine, and at 31 years old, I still feel like a complete jerk. We totally got her, though. Huh. I mean, yeah, you basically staged the murder of a loved one as a prank on an infant, so it is funny, but yeah, you don't get to pass through the pearly gates unless you've passed some more tests to prove that your conduct has reversed lately. My brother and one of his friends used to sit in his room and mess around on a Ouija board. It freaked out my grandma, who was extremely superstitious, really badly, so my dad and I decided the seances had to stop. I recruited one of my friends from college, who my brother had never met, and got a pair of pure black contacts. I had my friend put them in and hide in my brother's room. Note that on a TV show my brother watches, characters who are being possessed usually appear with black eyes. When my brother and his friend started using the board, he popped out at them and started hissing. Brother and friend ran screaming out of the house and refused to sleep in his room until I finally told him it had been a prank a month or so later. In short, I tricked my 13-year-old brother into believing that Satan had materialized in his bedroom. Uh, my older brother used to play this really fun game whenever we were in a swimming pool together. He'd pretend he was the shark and I would pretend I was a panicky, screaming five-year-old who could barely swim. Then he'd pull me under the water. Twenty years later and I still hate swimming. 
Older brothers, we love you, but F you. Sincerely, your better looking and more successful younger brothers. Scaring people once is funny. Making them live in fear is hilarious. Keep in mind that I weigh more than 250 pounds. My brother, age 20, has always been kinda jumpy. He says it's good reflexes, but it's just skittishness. I decided to help him with the problem. Over the past two years, I've hidden in virtually every nook and corner of our house. In closets, under furniture, inside cabinets. Places a big old fatty like myself should not be able to fit. Every time he thinks he's found all the hiding spots, I find a new one. I've hidden under and even in his bed only to jump out and scare him crapless. He lives in a world of paranoia when he gets home. At night when he reads in bed, at regular intervals he gets up and checks around the room with a flashlight to make sure that I'm not there hiding in the darkness. He even checks the closet multiple times a night to make sure I somehow didn't sneak into it when he closed his eyes just for a second. All of this is leading up to my final hiding place. He doesn't know it yet, but I brought a mattress that I'm storing at a friend's house. Slowly, I've been carving a me-shaped hole in it, and I'm going to replace his mattress with it, cover myself in a mattress topper, and the moment he lies down in bed, his mattress will get him. There's this dumb kid who dropped out of high school who likes me. And I mean really likes me. We're both in our 20s now, but he's completely obsessed with me. He has absolutely no life plans and he's stuck in a plumbing business with his younger, but slightly more attractive if I have to admit, brother. He makes no effort to get his life together at all. He likes to think that I'm his girlfriend and he tells that to everyone he knows. He always tries to put his arm around me and make a move, even though I'm fiercely trying to tell him that I have no interest in him whatsoever. And that's not even the worst part. He's a heavy substance user, and I mean frickin' heavy. He does so many shrooms that I'm kind of surprised he has the money to eat, not to mention paying the bills. The bottom line is the dude is insane. I have a boyfriend. He's really big and muscular, and I like him a lot. His only flaw is he's a bit aggressive, and occasionally he'll take me out to lunch or to a movie date or something, but God forbid the dumb kid finds out, because if he finds out, he sets out to find me. For some reason, he thinks that my boyfriend is trying to kill me secretly or something. I don't know what he thinks. But it would pretty much scar him for life if I told him this flat out, and that I don't want him, and that I already have a boyfriend and he's not kidnapping me. That's why I never tell him. He's messed up as it is already. I don't want to drive him to self-deletion. I just wish Mario would leave me alone, and I wish his moronic brother Luigi would stop helping him. When I was little, I had a blue bear, whose name was creatively Blue Bear. Well, Blue Bear did nothing to anyone, ever, primarily because he's an inanimate object. Parents were away, and of course, my brothers torment me. It was winter, and they told me he was cold, so they set him on fire. But then he was too hot, so they buried him in snow. Then he got too cold, so they cut his head off. Yeah, I don't get that logic either. He's fine, though. My mum fixed him up, and he's still sleeping with me at the ripe age of 25. Brothers are horrible creatures. I was an unplanned C-section. That counts as scarring someone for life, right? That's a very literal interpretation of our subject here, but actually your mother in all honesty probably didn't relish this memory either, so I'd say you probably fit the criteria. Well done. My brother is horrified of walking past beds. Because when he was five, he was going to get some clothes from our mum's room. I heard him coming up the stairs, so I ran into my mum's room and hid under her bed. He came in and walked past the bed, and I grabbed his ankles and pulled him under the bed. <laughs> he was horrified. Now he always checks under beds before walking near them, and he hops into bed because he's afraid he might get pulled under. I'm a horrible older sister. My brother had this issue in the bathroom where he has to open the shower curtain every time he goes to take care of business. So one time, I put his giant stuffed tiger in there and waited about two hours. I suddenly heard the single girliest scream I've ever heard come out of another male's mouth, and he was running down the hallway. Many laughs were had and jimmies were rustled. I was on Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds about eight years ago, and my buddy's girlfriend kept asking if she could get my other hit over and over again, and I finally asked, have you ever tripped before? She didn't. Anywho, she eventually got it, and everything was fine when we were listening to music in her room with my friend until she stopped talking and kept shaking her hair. She thought she was mildly bugging out, but it got worse. She started shrieking and shaking her hair more violently, 
and my friend didn't know what to do about his scared crapless tripping girlfriend, and neither did I. My trip was wearing off, my reality set in while witnessing someone else's reality fade out of orbit. Screaming, louder and louder, her mum enters the scene, and I'm literally backing up to the window to make an observation to see if I could jump three stories. She's still mute, besides screaming, and her mum is terrified, and so am I. My friend tells me that he thinks someone put something in her beer at the party that we didn't go to. She asks us to leave, and we did. She was fine, and slept it off. She told us that she thought spiders were all over her head, and an unexplained force kept her from talking. She thinks it was a bad ghost. Her and my friend broke up several years later, and during that time she kept checking her hair for spiders, and how she was scared of total darkness. Cause that's when the demons come out. I've not seen her in several years, but I think she's still messed up because I dosed her up and gave her a trippy critter nightmare from hell. In short, I gave a girl some pretty strong substances and she thought spiders and demons were consuming her, and now she checks her hair every day a lot and is scared of the dark. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.